this check okay this is day six day seven actually or day six for my lightning interviews uh, meeting the Porto council to be and mayors to be today we have will lambert running for council for ward one ward one good afternoon and thank you for seeing me <laughs> it's a pleasure <laughs> so you're on the hot seat today okay. i have five questions for you so for the topic uh first topic i'll be reading all the questions twice the first question uh usually i rephrase it just in case you know i, I mispronounce words english is not my first language but i'm gonna try my best okay first question pertains to you if you were given a magic wand to change anything in this town what would it be and why if you had a magic wand and could change anything in this town what would you change and why it's a tough question i, th I think for me i would change the attitude at town hall um I think this is a great place. Obviously, I wouldn't have chose to live here if I didn't think it was a great place. Um, I love the nature and the river and the tree-lined valleys and everything about this place and the historic and heritage the downtown area. Um, but this place has so much to offer and I see missed opportunities. So I would change the attitude at Town Hall. I would change it to be more friendly towards tourism because I think they can help our local local businesses. Um, I would just I would change it to be more accepting and outgoing and listening. Um, yeah, that's I just like to see a different attitude at Town Hall. All right. For our second question, it's in regard to business and environment. What should you think is more important, the business development of this township or the environmental aspect? And if your answer is a balance of both, how do you think you'll be doing this as part of your agenda? Let me rephrase this. What do you think is more important, the business development of our municipality or the environmental concerns of the residents? Okay, um, I'm going to say both and let me explain why. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm a trained fish and wildlife technician. That's what I went to college for. That mm -hmm. was my, my training and I worked six years for Ministry of Natural Resources. And I come from a family that was full of environmentalists and it's, it's very important to me too. Um, however, I do realize that the business environment, for lack of a better word, is important to the survival of this town. Um, I want to see a balance of both. I want to see our natural environment, the beauty of it protected, mm -hmm. but I also want to see the business community flourish. And I think that they can definitely happen hand in hand, especially with the type of businesses that we have around here. We're not, we're not heavy industry and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. We're mostly commercial and retail. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be uh, one at the expense of the other. I think that um, tourism being such a big impact too in this town, I think that keeping our natural environment is very important to drawing the tourists. So yeah, I think it can be a balance. Perfect. So for my third question, it pertains to the old and the new. Knowing that a big demographic of our town are older and retirees, how do you think we should balance the plans with our youth? We have a large population of retirees and seniors in our community. How will you balance their needs while increasing the opportunities for our youth? It's another good question and a tough question. I'm a recent retiree myself, so I totally get oh, where you're coming from. Oh, congratulations. And, I, I, and now I, you're going back to, oh man, <laughs> you're going back to the well, real work. Yeah, I did, I did 35 years with Toronto Fire. That was enough. I'm, I'm retired now, but I'm um, running a sideline business doing antiques and, and vintage stuff mm. with my wife. So it seems like retirement has been just as busy as my working life. And yeah, if I get on council, it'll get even busier. Um, so balancing those things, uh, we do have a very gray community, you know, it's very high age and there's a lot of people that move here only after they retire or when they're preparing to retire mm -hmm. uh, because it is a beautiful community with lots of heritage homes and so mm -hmm. on. Um, there isn't a lot to do for youth in this area and I, I worry because I've looked at the stats and we're actually losing people sort of in that 20 to 40 year range, mm -hmm. um, which are the young families having kids and so on. They're moving away because they can't find affordable housing or they may have difficulty finding good jobs there are jobs here but not necessarily high paying jobs mm -hmm. um, so there's 
there's got to be some work done on that end of it for sure. We have to provide more things for youth, but you have to recognize that this is a town full of seniors and we definitely have to cater to them as well and we have to prepare for them. There comes a point where they're going to have to leave their homes and so on. Mm -hmm. We don't have the long-term care spaces, so mm -hmm. there's there are problems there. Um, yeah, it's a it's a difficult balancing act. There there have been a few things added for youth in this area. There's um, uh, Zach's Dream Park was put in in the uh, park by Town Hall, and there was a skateboard park developed and so on. Um, but there's not a lot for young people to do here. There isn't a place where they can go and uh, dance and listen to music and you know do the things that they want, socialize, do the things they want to do now that COVID's over. Um, there aren't good places for that. There are a number of small clubs and bars, but there isn't sort of a, a big youth center or whatever that they mm -hmm. can use. Um, so yeah, difficult balancing act. Awesome. So for my fourth question out of the five, it pertains and topic is First Nations and Indigenous. Mm -hmm. Do you have a truth and reconciliation plan with Indigenous people? If so, what is your agenda on this? What are your plans to help our community participate in their reconciliation with Indigenous people? Yeah, I think it's an important issue and I consider myself just an ally, somebody on the outside. Now, mm -hmm. Between you and I, my mother always told me, she's from Nova Scotia, she always told me that we had Micmac in our family background, and mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I was very proud of that. Turns out it's not necessarily true. However, um, I am very appreciative of the situation. We fly the flag at home, I have the t-shirt, I'll be attending the event in the park on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, however, I'm an ally and an outsider. I need to learn more. I need to understand more. And that's that's where I'm going. I don't have any plans to deal with the issues. I, I want to listen to these people and have them tell me how we should be dealing with it. I'm not trying to impose my views on them, but I am, I am very um, conscious of the mistreatment that they've had. And um, like I say, I'm an ally. I know we need to make amends. I know we can do better going forward, but I want the direction to come from the indigenous people and not from somebody like me. <clears throat> My last question in regards to the corporation and the people. The current large corporations and developers that are stakeholders in our township have a lot to say in most projects here. Mm -hmm. How can you make sure that the local residents' interests are met? At present, there are large corporations and developers with the influence and resources to have their say about most projects here. Can you balance corporate interests with the interests of the residents and ensure that the people who live here are also heard? We can certainly try. Um, this is a question that I struggle with. We do have large corporations, large employers here, very few of them, and mm -hmm. they wield a lot of power in this town. Fortunately, they haven't been uh, abusive with that power, mm -hmm. but we also have uh, outside developers coming in, mm -hmm. and I do feel that they have been somewhat abusive with their power, and um, I, I sit on the Save Our Trees Committee because mm -hmm. we have uh, developers yeah. that are looking at, at wiping out the uh, Penryn Wood and some, and some other areas, mm -hmm. um, and... <clears throat> How do I say it? Yeah, we, we, the town needs to be more forceful and express the needs of this community more clearly when they're dealing with developers or large corporations. And we haven't been very successful in doing that. And uh, so with the Save Our Trees group, we're actually taking one of the local developers to the Ontario Land Tribunal because they want to cut down a forest that we feel should should remain. It's, mm -hmm. it's in town Ward 1, an urban forest that's very important mm -hmm. given climate change and, and those sorts of things. Um, but they're determined that they want to cut it all down because they own the property and they feel they have the right to build houses. And I don't think you have the automatic right mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. I think you have to work with the people in the municipality. Mm -hmm. um, so th the reality is when we go to the land tribunal, I, th I just read stats on this last night. I think it's 96% of land tribunal decisions go in favor of the developer. It's a very stacked process. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to go there. We're going to fight it. We hope that the municipality is going to join Save Our Trees in that fight. Uh, they've been invited to do so. 
Um, I don't know if they will do it or not. Um, but I think, you know, looking forward, when a developer comes forward to us with a plan, the town needs to say, okay, we need to protect the environment. We need to have a certain amount of your development is going to be affordable housing. Mm -hmm. They need to set down some ground rules and mm -hmm. then they need to stick to them. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was a development was proposed that looked really good and then through a series of applications to uh, amend the plan, mm -hmm. it kind of all went out the window. And so now what was going to be a mixed community originally is now exclusively uh, single family, fairly high cost homes. There's no, there's no townhomes there's no duplexes or semis there's mm -hmm. no low rise there's mm -hmm. no commercial spaces there's none of that it's just strictly um, become a bedroom community and a high-priced bedroom community which is not what Port Hope needs mm -hmm. you know we have a real problem with affordability mm -hmm. and a real low uh, vacancy rate and so we need to have mixed communities coming in here and we need to we need to work uh, developers are not bad don't get me wrong you can work with a good developer it can be mm -hmm. great for the town um but this is a large developer that has pushed us around a little bit in mm -hmm. my opinion and they've taken all the good out of the plan and we're left with the drugs so well that's it <laughs> thank you for that thank you and thanks for the ending with that as well really appreciate that good luck well thank you very much all right. i appreciate it